Welcome to Roland's Travels and today we're in the beautiful town of Corsham in Wiltshire. It's probably got one of the prettiest high streets in the country. Just ahead of us there is the Methuen Arms, a very old pub indeed and it has a long history. A Tudor house stood on this site which we know that in 1463 was owned by the Knott family and it became a public house in 1608. It was called the Red Lion then. The Methuen Arms eventually fell into the hands of the Methuen family who owned Corsham Court and that was around 1799 became a coaching inn and uh, has been ever since the Methuen Arms. These are the arms houses which again very old properties indeed with a long history in Corsham. These are the gates to the driveway to Corsham Court. These aren't used now. Uh, you access Corsham Court about halfway up that driveway and you'll see that later on. For more information about all the buildings we're looking at go to rollandmillward.com. The link is below. We'll give you a detailed history as much as we can of some of the properties that are in Corsham in this particular area. They're all in a very central area of Corsham. We've got the High Street then off the High Street is Corsham Court, Church Street which is a nice little street with some weavers cottages which we'll take a look at and uh, Matthew and Arms starts the high street off. Again, just as we walk back from the roundabout, we've got lovely cottages like that. This is a, a very old house, but look at the attachment on there, with that modern technical uh, building there, which houses some uh, IT type companies, I believe. So this is just on the Laycock Road in Corsham. We're now going to go and take a look at the high street, which really Let's does contain so much street. history here in Corsham. A beautiful hot day this was. Uh, sadly there's some works going on but I did have to wait for a little while for them to clear up a little bit but the vans are still there and uh, we'll take a walk down the high street now shall we. Are you ready? Let's go. You'll notice that most of the shops were at one time beautiful old houses which obviously have become shops over the years. Some would have been little shops as well at the time. Just take a look. Look up at the roof lines, the windows, all the stonework here. Corsham is famous for stone. It started out as an agricultural centre, but it, of course down the road uh, and underneath Corsham there are mines, lots of co uh, for stone the mines company's around. Finished digging the hole. Which ended up being used for military use, including a, a nuclear town, if you like, for the government to escape to in the event of nuclear war, which is accessed under Box Tunnel, the railway tunnel. Again, look at that magnificent old building there. Plenty of nice shops in Corsham still. As we go along, it's not one of those towns where every other shop or worse is empty. They are actually being used I mean, with a mixture of housing and flats as well, which is nice. It gives that nice residential mix to the town. Nice to see an independent bookshop as well, still going, which is uh, which is great. Got a few estate agents as well along the way, as you'd expect. But uh, a nice mixture of eating places, pubs, as well as we go through the high street. And a lot of history in each of these buildings, as you can see. And it would be possible to spend uh, many weeks of research on every single today. property here, I'm sure and to go through the records, find out who owned them, a little bit about those people wherever possible. Nice to have a bike shop as well. And you can see the prosperity that was here through the woolen trade. You see every property is so different and interesting when you look at them. I always like to look above the shops. When you're walking along a shopping centre, it's easy just to have your eyes looking at what's in the window. But look up, you'll often be amazed at what lies behind that shop front. Uh, that's just kind of a facade and the, if you like, the visibility of the old building behind is much more interesting as you go along. Now the high street is quite a long one and uh, we're going to talk about more of the buildings in the sort of second half of the high street if you like but I say each of it's these nice just look how magnificent they are and, uh, the as we go down through. Thankfully this has never been flattened in the 1960s regeneration programs that so many towns were affected by. Nice to see 
a few plants and hedges as well and the properties where they can put them in again just look up look at that magnificent building on the corner over there as well and we'll take a look back down the high street give you a view again there we go what a magnificent place this is too High Street carries on. High Street continues on from this junction. And we'll enjoy more of these fine old buildings. If you ever get the chance, do visit Corsham and pop into Corsham Court as well. If you like art, you'll like Corsham Court. It's uh, got a fantastic collection of paintings there. I think it's internationally known for its collection. And once you look up, you start to see the character of these buildings. We have that building there, another old one, and that particularly sort of uh, orangey type colour. There's a couple of uh, properties that colour some of these in Caution. Yeah. Again, yeah, we're looking at three, four, well, easily four hundred years, years of history. There, the very oldest property is at the end of the road. And we make our later. way through the high street again. Everything is very different, isn't it? Each of the buildings. Look at that magnificent porch. Using the, the word magnificent house. too much, I can tell, but uh, that's how I feel about these sort of places. I prefer these in many ways to your stately homes and castles, but of course they're important in our history. But each of these smaller buildings, homes that people lived in, have a, probably in my opinion a nicer story to tell right more often show you that. than not. The shop we're just going past on our right there is an antique shop, which is owned by a gentleman many of you might know, and that is Mr Paul Martin, well known for being the presenter of the BBC TV series Flog It. There it is again, yeah, in the blue. The antique shop of Mr. Paul that's Martin, his antique shop. Who hosts... Uh, it was closed that day. BBC TV. So couldn't say hello to him. And there's one of the pubs in the high street. Matthew and Arms on one end, this one further down. And there's today. another pub coming up a little bit further on our left, next to the town hall, which we'll take a look at as we get a little bit closer to that. But as you can see, every step of the way along this high street has got all these lovely buildings. Magnificent houses in their day, well still are today of course, but imagine uh, the wealthy people that lived here making their money from agriculture, then perhaps wool trade as well, and then moving into stone. That would have been uh, producing income for, for some, not so much for others, but it would have given them employment. Coming up to the town hall, where the clock is, you can see. That's got an interesting history to it, of course. As we're passing under the bunting, cross the road in a moment, take a, a look at the side we've been on, and we'll show you the over. town hall as well. And there's a little pub squoze in next to the town hall. You see the town hall with the hunting emitting from it further down. Oh, that's another magnificent property there. And here we are. This is the town hall coming up right now. This is over 200 years old. It was originally a market hall, and then uh, it eventually became the town hall. It has been used as the World War One hospital as well. So we're going to swing the camera back so that we can take a look at the town hall. And there it is, with its clock protruding from near the top. There have been a few alterations over the years. It was expanded a little bit, but it now serves the purpose for our town hall in Corsham. It was completed in 1784. Now we're coming along this side of the road where we're going to actually see some really old properties and some weavers' cottages, so let's have a look at those. So there is Priory Street 
and a memorial here to a Victorian gentleman who was a philanthropist. We'll take a look at that for you. This is in memory of Mr. Mayo, who did a lot of good around Caution. And then we have the really very well known in this area, the beautiful stonework of what they call the Flemish weavers' cottages. And uh, they're most interesting, as are the buildings coming up on my left now and across the road. I'll show you those and tell you a little bit about them. We'll put in the voiceover to make it a little bit better from any noisy traffic that's going to go by. There isn't too much traffic, but as soon as we start talking, a vehicle will come past. Guarantee that. It looks like there was a sign on that one above the doorway in between the tental windows. Horsham Court is behind that wall. So let's cross over. The house I'm passing now is the oldest in the parish of Horsham. Take another view down length of these cottages. So that house there, this is the oldest one, and a van is going to pull up in front of the others, which is just well timed. He's an Amazon van of some delivery kind, so he's delivering a parcel and he'll be gone. Now I'm going to try and show you the sign that still exists on the building opposite. Because this used to be a temperance hotel. If you just have a look here, and just make it out. Can you see that? Now, every one of these properties, of course, is going to have some amazing history. No doubt it would be very interesting to delve into all of it. We're just going to Priory Street in a second. It just shows you what happened here, Mr. Mayo's memorial. It has been restored in 2007, but he lived around the corner here. But I think it's the property in scaffolding. Peacocks, they do like to wander around. You see them just behind the car. So that's the entrance to Ivy House, which is where Mr. Mayo lived.
and yes it's all behind this scaffolding at the moment scaffolding and all ivy house and the very first fire station in Corsham is one with all the wheelie bins in front of it just make out the arch over those double doors that's where the uh, horse-drawn fire engine would have been stored so there's an interesting nugget for you Now I've walked down Church Street to the church just to film here. It was a little bit busy when I came down so I didn't film it on the way down. I'm going to have a look around the church here now just show you this and then we'll go back down Church Street before going into Corsham Court. It was quite a busy day in Corsham so uh, to get the best out of the filming not have too many people standing around in one spot hiding the view I thought well let's do it this way round. So Behind this church is Caution Court, so it's right on the edge of the, the walls, if you like, of the, the main sort of court area. The Caution Court is very extensive grounds, in fact, and uh, there's a lot of references in here to the Methuen family, of course, going back 400 years of history in this area. And that in front of us is the entrance now to Caution Court. This is their shared car park with the church, not many spaces. So if you do visit, I would tend to use the public car park and walk in. So now I'm going back. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the little map. So if you do come into Caution, you can get a little map here to have a look at this main sort of area where a lot of the history is. And as we walk down Church Street, there's something interesting over on our right hand side, which is in the boundaries of Caution Court. We'll swing around, take a look at that in a moment. Who's coming? It's into view now. This is called Nash's Folly. It was built to hide the view from Caution Court of the property here that we see in uh, Church Street. So they didn't want to see somebody else's house. What an expense to go to to make it look like that. So as we make our way down Church Street here, got more old weavers' cottages on the right and these ones on the left. Now on the right you can see the doorway where the woolen goods would have been raised up to the floor where the weaving took place. There we are, there's that doorway. And then we're going to rejoin the High Street. So now I've gone back down Church Street to Caution Court and as you can see it's got that Elizabethan frontage. It has been tampered with over the years but the frontage is very much in the Elizabethan E-shape style and you'll find more information at rollermillward.com about Caution Court and I hope you'll enjoy all the articles that you'll see at Roland's Travels over there on Substack. So it's an impressive drive, an impressive estate. There's a lake in the distance that Capability Brown had his hand in these gardens. And uh, I can't show you anything inside 
the house but it's an amazing picture Gary that uh, again just shows a fine stonework on this property this is the north side of the house opposite the entrance way so two entrances in effect it would have had a north and a south in the past so both grand in their own way with a driveway coming in from the north side and one from the south side too you can pay just to go around the gardens currently it's five pounds or ten pounds if you take the house and the gardens tour and while you're here why not lots of walkways around the gardens uh, a lot of it is in the capability style of trees and nice walkways through tree-lined avenues there aren't too many uh, stone features there are a few carvings and uh, buildings to look at but not too many it's not overly done lots of little sections like this with a beautiful flower so I'll let you take them all in as uh, we walk around this area Now this is an entrance to the bathhouse, but you'll mainly see the bathhouse from the other side. We need to go out of the garden and round to reach it, and then we'll show you the bathhouse. But look at the beautiful stained glass window just inside the bathhouse, there with the coat of arms for the Methuen's. So let's take this turning to the right. I think it will bring us to the main side of the bathhouse we just walked up to edge of the property there I think the wall so let's go around this away and see what we can find Certainly got some amazing trees growing. It's quite a huge list of trees which they give you on a leaflet. And uh, as we come round, we can start to see the bathhouse emerging from those trees. Let's get around this corner. Here we are, we get to the frontage of it. Please do not enter. No, 
Charlie. So leaving the bathhouse, look what we find. Some of Corsham Court's peacocks, which tend to wander about all through Corsham High Street and around as well. So they are pretty well known and very noisy at times, are peacocks. So I'm sure the residents get used to it though. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip around Corsham and Corsham Court. For more details, do check out rowlandmillward.com. I do write about in detail a lot of the places that I visit over there on my Substack post. You can sign up for the free newsletter. Please do that. And if you want to become a paid subscriber there as well, that's always greatly appreciated. So I want to thank you very much indeed. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please click the subscribe button. Click the notification bell, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for joining me. I hope to bring you some more videos very soon, and there are plenty on the channel if you've missed to go and have a look back on. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.